powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. A Friday edition of Football at Four. It's sponsored by EMT Solar and Roofing. See if your home qualifies for a free roof with solar installation. No commitments, no hidden fees. Go to ESPNSolar.com to see if you qualify. Adam Kaplan is here. And, of course, the Eagles have a Monday night game. We have a lot to dive into on this Football 4 edition here on the Sports Pass Live 97.3 ESPN. Normally about this time we're looking at the injury report, Adam, and we know one injury that uh, we shall touch on to begin here would be that one to Avante Maddox, who uh, may or may not play. Looks like he's doubtful to play in the game, but uh, that is probably one that we saw them suffer before and it didn't go so well for their defense. So let's start with him and how that uh, might affect this game on Monday night. Yeah, he didn't work today. The Eagles just released their injury report. Mike, good to be with you on Friday. Yes, before they actually practice tomorrow as well. Uh, Josiah Scott was limited again today. Josh Job, unfortunately, he he keeps getting hurt. Boy, they really like him. It's, they'd like to get him like maybe in rotation as the fourth corner if he could stay healthy in addition to playing on special teams. But uh, he's dealing with this hamstring injury. Doesn't look good for him to play. But uh, the big one is Avante Maddox. And let's not forget, you you, know, you mentioned he missed two games earlier this season with an ankle injury. Now it's a hamstring injury. He got he, he got hurt late last game. Doesn't look good for this game. Uh, yeah, I, I think you've categorized it well, calling him doubtful. I, I would absolutely call him that. Very doubtful, quite frankly. The, we're, we're seeing this trend. We talked about this on our show, Inside the Birds, this week. It's been the first year that I could recall covering this business 20 years. A lot of guys are having soft tissue injuries. More often than not, they're not playing. Now, I know this is a longer season. That may have to do with it. This is the second year of the 17-game season, 18-week season. But, yeah, we're seeing a lot of this. And when, you gotta, when you're, you're not like an offensive lineman, when you're someone who's got to stop and start, stick your foot in the ground, these guys, more often than not, are not playing this the, the week after that they get hurt. Remember, again, he got hurt late in that game. So if – if Scott can't go, right now I call him questionable. That's the issue. I, I don't know exactly how they would do that. I, I know that they don't – the way I understand it, they like to keep Gardner Johnson in the role that he has now. Yes, he's played nickel before and the slot, but remember the way that the Eagles play the, – the way the Eagles play their defense here is not the same the way that they played New Orleans. So why ask him to learn yet another new position so I could see them doing something else, maybe get Zach McPherson in there? Is it, it, who's not? He's a terrific special teams player, but remember they draft him also as a quarterback. Yeah, Adam, uh, the injuries in general, the Commanders. You know, Wentz is out. Dotson, McKissick, yeah. uh, Chase Young uh, coming back. Uh, so uh, where where are they entering Monday night? Boy, they have a lot of them. So Wentz won't be. He can't play anyway because he's got. This is his fourth game. Uh, he's got the broken thumb. They don't have an exact timeline when he'll be back. It's typically a four to six week injury when you have a broken thumb. And it's his right throwing some. He got thumb. He got hurt against the Bears in a Monday night win, uh, where he actually was able to finish the game, but he did not play well then. And uh, with Taylor Heineke, with the Eagles know well, he, he started against them last year. Uh, he'll start again. John Dotson. Now we had noted on our show earlier this week the word we had got from our Washington people is that John Dotson would start working, and he has, but they're not 100 percent sure that he'll play. It's trending that way. But the problem is not so much, Mike, that Dotson, a rookie first rounder from Penn State, would be able to play. It's a hamstring injury. He's had this now for five weeks. How much can he play? And the shame of it is, boy, did he get off to a great start. For those of us who play fantasy football, he had been a gold mine. He'd have been a terrific draftee for us. But um, right now, it looks like he'll be able to play. But again, how much he could play if he doesn't have a step, setback would be an issue. J.D. McKissick, who really signed to be a passing down back, if you recall, Mike, he agreed to a multi-year deal with the Bills. He verbally, he backed out. He never signed the contract, so he backed out. Surprisingly, went back to Washington. But Antonio Gibson, uh, who is not running the ball well, but what they did is they revised his role with Brian Robinson coming back from the, the gunshot wounds. Gibson now has a complementary role. Where he's more of a factor in the pass game. And, boys, he th- he's really done a good job of that. If you recall... When he played at Memphis, uh, transferring from a junior co- actually, actually community college or junior college, I forget. But he was actually a 225-pound slot receiver. So yeah. uh, talking to Ryan Silverfield, the head coach at Memphis, they just thought he, there's, that's just not going to work, being that heavy at six foot one playing the slot. So they moved him to running back. He only played running back one year, and he struggled last season. So the, uh, Scott Turner and the OC and the head coach, Ron Rivera, moved him to running back, and 
and, and more of a, a pass catching running back that's worked. Uh, and now they've got major changes to their offensive line, Mike. This is where they've really struggled. In fact, this is where you saw the Eagles, Mike, get their nine sacks. They bl- their blitz percentage was higher, and everything they seemed to do worked in that first matchup. They're without West West Schweitzer, the right guard. It could be the season. He's got a severe concussion. It's a shame. Chase really it's going to miss probably the rest of the season. He's their center. He had right knee surgery earlier this season. Turning to defense, Chase Young. They're not willing to commit to him playing. He's very close. Uh, he's coming back from ACL surgery, Mike, if you recall from last season. And both of their middle linebackers, Chase Holcomb and David Mayo, are hurt. Uh, Mosher had a good point last night. Mayo's closer to uh, than Holcomb playing. So those would be the injuries for both teams, pretty extensive, particularly for the commanders. All right, so let's see how they affect the matchups here as we take a look at yeah. the matchups with Adam Kaplan. The Eagles offense uh, last time, 24 points in the second quarter, nothing else. That's it, 24, but it was enough. So how does their offense now stack up against a very good uh, Washington front? Mike, I'd have to say that blitzkrieg in the second quarter, 24 straight points, was one of the most impressive things I've seen this season. I watch all 32 teams, not just one team. It was incredible, and it wasn't just offense. The defense got after it, but uh, to me, it's 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 much of the same. Uh, if I'm the Eagles coaching staff, I, uh, offensive staff, I'm going to go after that secondary. They, they housed them. They went after those corners. In fact, we learned Rashad Wagus's name because the, you saw that his name. I mean, he kept running downfield. Yeah, and Smith got them badly. Uh, that was the biggest game of Devontae Smith's career. I'd expect him to have another big game. And by the way, A.J. Brown was pretty good in that game. I expect him. He has been unbelievable. He is not only going to be, if this continues to be a pro bowler, he could be an all-pro this season. He's headed for career numbers in every statistical category. He's been everything and more that the Eagles could have expected. I would expect him to be a factor. I know Goddard, I, I know Washington doesn't give up a lot of production to uh, to tight ends, but you know what? Goddard, to me, has got to, they got to get him involved as well. But I would expect Smith. I know people are wondering after this slow start uh, for Smith, will he be reinvigorated to the offense here? If you remember week one, he didn't do anything really, very little. And then the second week, it was he crushed it. The second the, the, the game against Washington, he crushed it. So, so just talking about the offense here, I would expect him to be more involved. Now, Washington, by the way, is very good against the run. But I think the way you beat them is you throw the football. Yeah, and uh, they took a lot of shots down the field the last time they played. I think uh, it was eight times uh, they went uh, over 20 yards downfield. So it feels like that they could, you know, get – I think uh, Jalen Hurts had over 200 passing yards alone in the second quarter of that game. It was unbelievable. They took at least – someone told me that they, in their count, they took at least eight shot plays. Uh, I, I, it was some of, It was so aggressive. I loved it. And, you know, th- this is the thing about Jalen Hurts, which cannot be under discussed. The confidence that the coaches have to not only let him come in out throwing, but to take shot plays because you know he was not an accurate downfield thrower last season, and he's actually now a top five by NFL metrics downfield thrower, which is really remarkable in his second full season. Uh, Adam, we know that this uh, offense against this defense, you know, uh, last week, Hawkinson, I think uh, nine for 70 says a lot here. What does that mean for the Eagles uh, game plan with Dallas Goddard? Yeah, that's a great point, Mike. And I don't think, see, here's what happened. Because it was the first game with with, uh, Hawkinson with the Vikings, I don't think Washington was prepared for that. And the other thing is Hawkinson caught all nine targets. And here's what you do, and the Eagles do this anyway. They're, they're a heavy, they're much heavier 11 personnel team, which means three receivers. If I'm the Eagles, I am coming and spreading them out. I, I'm, I'm going with Quez Watkins as a vertical slot. He drew a pass interference in the first game. So I, I would absolutely do that. And obviously the Eagles have, and, 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 and Goddard's a slot tight end. Jack Stoll's the inline tight end where they go 12 personnel. They've got the personnel to do this. Now, I know the one issue, and it, it's fair, people brought it up is the Eagles gave up too much pressure last week. They didn't have a bad game on the offensive line. They just had some individual bad plays. My lot had some plays he liked to have back. I, I, I'm not turning away from that if I'm the Eagles. I'm just accepting it, making corrections. I would fully expect them to have an aerial barrage. It would shock me if they don't come out throwing in this game. Uh, Adam, I don't know real quick before we move into the defense. Uh, did you ha- happen to hear what uh, Jimmy Johnson had to say about the Eagles offense? Yeah, I did. I did. I, I, um, look, I have a ton of respect for Coach Johnson. Look, uh, we've dealt with this on Inside the Birds. We've discussed this a lot. I know fans are sick and tired of hearing people take shots at the Eagles and say they haven't played anybody. Again, you play the teams on your schedule. 
did they pay, they face Cooper Rush and not Dak Prescott? Fact. Okay. Oh, by the way, I know it was early in the season. I had said this in a, when we were leading up to the season. You want to face the Vikings earlier in the season because they have two new schemes. But guess what? They were healthy that game, and the Eagles housed them. The, 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 they, that, that game was not even remotely close. It, the game, the score may have looked like it, but the Eagles dominated that game. I'm not an Eagles homer. People know me. I mean, you know, I'm not a fan of the team, but I'm, we're supposed to be objective. But I, I see all 32 teams. They're the best team in the National Football League. Well, now, I want to see what happens, though, Mike. One thing before we move on. I, we, you and I talked about this last Friday. I do want to see what happens when they play at Dallas, okay? I want to see what happens when they play the Giants twice. And Tennessee, when they come in, because the Eagles have, don't have a very good run defense. The, that's when you'll know how dominant and special this team is. Yeah, and, and the one thing that he mentioned, too, he says, look, he says, if you look at Philadelphia, they run a different style of offense. It gives people problems right off the bat. Most of their scoring comes early, especially in the second quarter. But once a team adjusts to that different style, then that's what's, you know, the, in other words, they're, they're playing a style that's a little quirky with the RPO. That's catching teams early in games, but they're making the adjustments and then they're shutting them down. So in other words, the second time a team plays them, which will be Monday night, Dallas the second time, they should have a much better game plan going in. Any credence to that in your mind? Yeah, we got a bad connection with you, Adam. We got a bad connection with Adam there. He's a little uh, frozen. So uh, we'll see if we can uh, get him back into uh, the picture here and see one more time uh, and see if he is connected here on the Sports Bash Live 97.3. Nope, he bounced out. Uh, so it looks like he had a little bit of a bad connection. I think he is back real quick. All right, there we go. How's my connection? Now? You're Mike, how's my connection? Is it good? Yep, you're back. You're back. Okay. Now, what I was saying is if you go back to the Tampa Bay game last year, Mike, the playoff game, not the first game, the playoff game, they got housed. Once Tampa Bay shut the Eagles' run defense down, they had the Eagles had run offense. They had nothing to do. They couldn't do anything. A, Hertz was not ready yet to throw the ball a lot. And B, uh, they were so bad at receiver, other than Devontae Smith. And Goddard, by the way, A, is having a breakout season. You have to mention that when you criticize the Eagles. You have to mention or look at their personnel. you got to say Goddard's now one of the top five tight ends in the league. He's having a breakout season, headed for 85-plus catches. Smith is really good. He just because... Uh, A.J. Brown and Goddard dominate the football. Uh, let, let me let me put it back to you this way. And I know Dallas is big and they are deep in the secondary. If you're a defense, how are you going to stop the – okay, you want to stop the RPO? Are you going to stop their passing game? No one's really been able to do it yet. Yeah, I point? mean, it's kind of a pick-your-poison type thing, and that's what makes them dangerous is because Hurts spearheading this whole thing is making the right decisions. If you have a guy who's not making the right decisions, that's a different – And that's another one. Mike, great point. I, we, it's another point that we need to make more talk about more on your show and on Inside the Birds. He's so good with the football. What are they, plus 15 still? Are they still is it plus 15? I think so, yeah. Like that? Well, and this was brought up during the week uh, with Dan Orlovsky and Keyshawn Johnson, who were having a debate, and, and he said, essentially, you could plug 10 different quarterbacks into the system here, and the Eagles would be 8-0. Well, okay, so I know Dan very well. Um, he, here's how I, he's actually he's come on Inside the Birds, great guy. In fact, because of that, we should probably have him on soon. <laughs> we'll probably try to get him on, but here's the thing with that. Yes, when you play at the NFL's best offensive line, it, 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 it certainly makes it better when you're going back to pass. But here's the thing. Hertz doesn't force the football. Did you see Marcus Mariota last night? Awful. Did you see him force the football? He was terrible. So I, I, I'm not a Hertz apologist. I'm just a, I'm, My job is – to A, report, B, to analyze. We do both on Inside the Birds. And when we talk to other teams, they marvel at the willingness to let Hurts throw the football downfield. They weren't doing this last season. Not at all. He's uh, he's he's a top-10 quarterback. It's not even debatable anymore. Yeah. Uh, last thing, real quick. I know you got to get running. The commander's offense, no wins, a lot of sacks, yeah. nine last time. How does that change the dynamics of the matchup against this Eagles defense? Well, here's the thing. Now, Greg Cosell told uh, – he was on the, the FantasyPoints.com uh, live stream with me and John Hanson last night, and he had a really good point because I I'd, I'd put this out in our show a year ago that from what we were hearing from Washington, McCl Terry McLaurin does not like to be moved. He likes to play one side of the field. But what's happened without Jah Jahan Dotson – and Logan Thomas has been hurt. He's, missed, he's finally off the injury report, but he's been hurt a lot. They've needed to find another way to create matchups. And McLaurin, by the way, is coming on. He, he – he was the reason why they beat the Colts. 
And he did a good job last week. They just, unfortunately, they blew that game against Minnesota. But they're moving McLaurin around a little bit. And if 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 Maddox and uh, Josiah Scott aren't playing, that does worry me because McLaurin will line up inside a little bit more than he ever has because he's really not done that before. But you're going to see him do that, especially if – now, if Dotson plays now, he doesn't have to do that too much. And Dotson, by the way, could be lined up everywhere. Uh, he's their Z receiver, which means he's moved all around. So we'll see what happens. All right, uh, it all happens uh, Monday night right here on 97.3 ESPN. Adam will be back on Tuesday to recap Monday Night Football. Mosh will be here to give us a preview on Monday for football at 4 and check out Inside the Birds 5 o'clock Monday night for the pregame? Yes, 5 to 7 p.m. Yes, yes, and we got a couple bi- couple cool announcements coming. At, at, oh, wait, I saw your guy John Filippo is a new head coach. Yeah, Flip, yeah, John's going to come on again. Yeah, we, he and I had a nice talk. He, he's trying to hire a general manager right now. Good good guy. Are you in the we running? Wish him luck. Yeah, in the USFL, he's are you in the, the run? Breaker. Are you in the running for GM? <laughs> John, uh, Jeff and I said we should be his GMs. Yeah, he's been very gracious with his time. Good person, good guy. Very good. And and uh, yeah, and then we're gonna have a former NFL head coach on real soon. We're gonna probably announce that in about a week. Um, yeah, it's gonna be cool. We we're, that's for our Patreon subscribers only, by the way. And just go to patreon.com slash inside the birds, and we're gonna have some special stuff for you guys who subscribe. We appreciate it. All right, uh, Adam Kaplan, have a good weekend, man. You too, thanks. At Kaplan NFL on Twitter. And, of course, you guys know Inside the Birds. You can check them out on InsideTheBirds.com.